That's exactly what I mean, because God has worked miracles in my life. He's taken me from the very worst of circumstances, mm -hmm. and he has delivered me into a position now to where uh, I always hope to be a blessing to others, and he mm -hmm. certainly put me in that position. Well, Bill, the book Delivered, was this your, uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, Dark Force, this was your first book. That's correct, yeah. Uh, what made you come to write this book, Dark Force? A calling. Uh, God called me to do this. I never in a million years thought that I would be in a position uh, to be an author. I'm ashamed to tell both of you this. However, it is true. I have an eighth grade education. I've had many hardships and tragedies in my life. And based on those things, I s stopped going to school. I lied about my age. I went to work. And I never felt uh, worthy enough or good enough or that I would ever have the intellect to be able to sit down and, and author one book, let alone two, and working on my third now. But I praise God for everything because he truly has worked miracles in my life. Mm -hmm. And if he would do such a thing for me, he will do it for anyone that will seek him. Anyone. Well, Bill, um, Dark Force. Uh, we have people watching it who are, who are Christians and understand what the Dark Force is. And then we have some who may not understand. Explain to us Dark Force. Well... Just as surely as there is a glorious God and his son that is our savior, we know this to be true and just as surely as they exist, unfortunately there is an enemy as well and he seeks to rob, kill and destroy. And unfortunately uh, the enemy and his minions did just that to my family. My family was greatly affected and uh, systematically destroyed by these demonic forces. Well. Tell us more about how your family was. Well, the story uh, in Dark Force, I say that it began in 1970. Mm -hmm. uh, but to be quite honest with you, I believe, uh, based on information that I had gathered after writing the book, uh, that it goes much further back. And, and I can't prove this, but I have a strong belief and feeling that someone on my mother's side of the family actually did something, whether it would be uh, opening a doorway, conjuring demons, something to cause uh, demons to come upon the family and create a family curse, if you will. And I believe that that evil force actually led us to this house in Glen Burnie, Maryland, uh, where evil was already present and manifest. And uh, I've often said that my family and I were under a two-pronged attack from evil, and it greatly contributed to the destruction of my family. Well, I, well Norma, we believe in, a, in, in God Almighty, but there is also a, a, an enemy. Yeah, a friend of mine uh, said once to someone, said, well, I don't believe in the devil. Okay. And the guy that he said it to said, well, that doesn't matter whether you believe or not. It's a fact. Absolutely correct. And he says, and my friend says, and I don't believe in hell either. And he said, well, that doesn't change the temperature one bit. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I like it's that. True. Yeah. It's true. And, and, and that's, that's the way it is. I mean, some people don't, don't understand that we, we're in a war. Yes. We're in a war, like it or not. Yes, ma'am, we but are. But you know what? Jesus is there, so we don't have to be frightened about it. But if we don't know we're in a war, how can we defend ourselves? And see, this is the thing right here. Um, this is why it is so important. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm not trying to, uh, to uh, sell you anything. I'm not trying to uh, impose my will on you. But I'm a living witness to the power of Almighty God through His Son, our glorious Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, who has worked miracles in my life. And again, uh, evil does exist. And I take no glee in saying that. I take no glee at all in saying that. But it is true. Um, the things, the, the events that I have listed in both books are terrifying. And, and I take, again, I, I take no glee in reporting these things. However, it's the truth. And the truth needs to be told because people are being led away from God I firmly believe that we're in the last days, and I believe that the enemy and his minions have turned up uh, the attacks on people all over this country and in different parts of the world. And I think that it is of the utmost importance now that we turn back. We must turn back to God before it's too late. Well, Bill, I tell you what, we're going to go to a special song in a moment, but when we come back, let's narrow it down. Let's get right into some of the specifics, maybe even some of the specifics that may be even taking place in some of our evangelical Pentecostal churches. Sure. Sounds good? Sure. Right now, Derek and Jessica have a very, very special song, and they're going to minister to you and to us. The 
Welcome back. We're here with the author, William Bean, wrote two wonderful books. First one was Dark Force and the second one, Delivered. Let's go back to Dark Force, Bill, as we were talking just briefly, Norma and I, with, with you. And uh, w When did you begin to sense these evil forces at, at, at your home? Well, uh, the story in the home begins in 1970 uh, when my parents purchased a three-bedroom uh, ranch-style home located in Glenburnie, Maryland, in a community called Herondale. The house was semi-dilapidated. Uh, my father was a master carpenter, so he saw this as a restoration project, which he did. A lot of people do that today. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes, he, he did wonderful work to it. Uh, but my first recollections at the age of four, I had fear uh, upon just seeing the house. I knew something wasn't right. Now, you know, again, I'm a very young child. I shouldn't feel these emotions. I did know something and sensed that something was wrong uh, from the very beginning. Uh, my mother was the first to have an experience in the house, and it occurred a couple days after we had moved in. It happened uh, while she was unpacking boxes in the living room. My father had taken us, and I have an older sister and younger brother, he had taken us uh, with him to his parents' house for the day to allow my mother to get to have, organized. Yes, ma'am, to, to be able <laughs> to have peace and quiet, <laughs> yes, while she organized the house. And it was in the course of this. Uh, that she felt a presence come mm -hmm. from behind. And in her mind, she thought that it was my dad sneaking back in to play a joke on her. He had that type of sense of humor. Mm -hmm. uh, so she spun around fully anticipating to see him, and she was hoping to startle him first. And to her shock, uh, nothing was there. And uh, as you can imagine, she was quite startled and taken aback by it. Uh, so eventually she was able to collect herself and go back to doing what she was doing 
when one of the bedroom doors slammed shut by itself, and that was enough to make her go outside until we returned. So that's where it began, and it gradually escalated into uh, violent physical attacks on us by these demonic entities. And see, this is what I tell people all the time. Uh, the devil doesn't come and say, here I am, I'm going to destroy you now. It's a very subtle thing. It's a very small thing. And it starts out in a very small manner, and then what happens is it builds these negative emotions uh, when we have fear, when we have doubt, uh, when we have uh, confusion. This is all the enemy at work. And they feed off of these negative emotions, and they get bigger and stronger, and that is exactly what happened in this case. Well, whatever. What else happened to you? Oh, my goodness. I mean, uh, I know some of your story, but... Yeah. When you were seven years old, what happened? Well, when I was seven years old, my brother and I, my brother's a couple years younger than I am. My father, again, uh, being a contractor, had one of these utility trucks, uh, the, the truck with the body with all the toolboxes on it. One day, I guess a child's curiosity, mm -hmm. uh, I crawled into one of these boxes. My brother was standing there with me. He shut the door and locked it. <gasps> And I got to tell you guys, I should have really suffocated because there was no air in this box. And I was just absolutely panicked out of my mind. And I recall, and, and we'll get into this a little further, but I have to share this uh, with you and, and the viewers. I recall calling out for Jesus Christ to save me. Wow. How old were you? Seven. <clears throat> Amazing. Now my family had no... Uh, my parents believed in God, but we had no faith-based structure. We had never once attended church as children. We were never baptized. Wow. Yet, I do believe that God had a plan sure. for me even then, and I cried out for Jesus Christ to save me. And sure enough, uh, one of the neighbors, the next-door neighbor, heard, heard it, and he came out and opened the box. Had he not, I'm quite sure that I would have died that day. So, so, so even at an early age... You sensed, it, as you said earlier, the, the, the forces of evil. And, of course, Norma, when we think about it, what little protection did they have over that home? There was no priest of the home. Right. And it's amazing because we hear many stories like this from other parts of the world. That, that uh, I remember the Muslim couple we had here, that they came to know Jesus Christ without even anyone ever witnessing to them. This is amazing. So then something bizarre really happened to your mom one day. Yeah, well, many things happen. Uh, I, I have to tell you, um, and again, I'll try and be as brief as I possibly can because of the vast uh, material of my story. And, and I could quite easily, both of those books could have been twice the thickness. Uh, I left a lot of things you out. You have to select, don't you? Yes, ma'am. I, I felt that I made the point. Uh, I take no glee in sharing these terrible things. However, the main message and the powerful message is again, that God can deliver us from the very worst of circumstances if we'll just submit to him and turn to him and accept Jesus Christ. Uh, so uh, many uh, physical attacks did occur. Uh, my poor mother suffered more than any other person I've ever known in my life. Uh, I, I have to tell you that uh, there were character changes within each and every one of us in the course of living in the house. And the first major change came with my father. Uh, my dad... Uh, his story is so tragic and so sad in itself because this is a man that was gifted. He was so blessed and gifted with the ability uh, to be successful at anything that he desired. And um, this man uh, was a man that I saw in the early years as a heroic figure. I wanted to be like him. Mm -hmm. He is a very charismatic individual, uh, just very, very blessed in every aspect of his life. And he should have flourished and we should have flourished with him. However... I do believe that he came under attack from these demonic forces, and, and a character change did uh, come after that. And he began to drink very heavily and uh, started frequenting bars and staying out late at night. And, and needless to say, this was causing problems with my mom and him. Sure, sure. And, uh, you know, one thing led to another, and he had turned into a raging alcoholic who began to physically abuse my mother on a regular basis between 1973 and 1975, nearly killing her on several occasions. I can recall being eight years old having to run and call the police on my father because he was killing my mother. Um, these